Welcome to day 15 of my 30 day security challenge. It's the month long challenge I created to help you gain control of your privacy and security online. You can follow along at my blog at snubsy.com or you can check out each video in the playlist at youtube.com slash tech thing. Today is all about two factor authentication. The reason why I decided to wait until halfway through the security challenge to bring up two factor authentication or 2FA for short, along with password managers and tomorrow being VPNs, is because each of these sounds like a very daunting task. And it is tough to get someone to even consider using these because they require lots and lots of setup. But as with a lot of these options, the hours you spend setting up these applications will save you stress and anxiety in the future. So let's chat about 2FA. First off, what is two-factor authentication? So 2FA is a type of multi-factor authentication. It consists of two of three different things, either knowledge, something that you know, possession, something that you have, or inheritance, something that you are. You already use this for your bank at an ATM machine. Uh, something that you have is the debit card, and then something you know is your PIN. That is two-factor authentication. Online, 2FA usually consists of something you know, like your username and password, and something you have, which is a device that generates a code that you can then type into your computer. I'm like keyboard cat. Typically, once a website is set up to use two-factor authentication, the process goes like this. You click login to log into your account, you type in your username and password, and then you click login. The website recognizes that your account has two-factor authentication turned on, so it prompts you for a six-digit passcode. And the passcode can be more or less depending on how the website is set up. And then you click OK and it will log you in. That's it. In most circumstances, the 2FA code changes every several seconds, so it never stays the same. That way, if someone watches your logon over your shoulder and they see your two-factor authentication code, they would not be able to log in with the same two-factor authentication code again, as it is always changing. Now, in the case of inheritance or something that you are, that would be something like a biometric fingerprint, voice recognition, iris scan, or face ID. One company that uses multi-factor authentication with biometrics would be clear. That's a company that is showing up at airports all across the US. They ask for your ID and your airplane ticket, and then they scan your fingerprint in a reader and let you through security. So it's basically like a high-tech TSA line. Anyways, 2FA. How do you receive codes for 2FA online? You can buy a 2FA USB key like the one sold by Yubico, which is over at yubico.com. I'll put that link down below. You could also just use SMS or you could download a mobile app and receive codes that way. Each of these has a drawback or two. Now the drawbacks of 2FA are if you use it with a device like a USB two-factor authentication key, this requires that you walk around with an extra thing in your pocket. Most people don't want to do that, but but since it's not a connected device, it can't get hacked and is less likely to get stolen. Of course, you could lose that two-factor authentication device and then you would be kind of screwed. If you use two-factor authentication with your mobile phone, and that's what I recommend for easiest use, your phone could get stolen or broken and then you wouldn't have access to your 2FA keys whenever they are generated in your 2FA app or SMS text. If you use an app and switch phones, you need to have some sort of backup codes to access your accounts online till your new account and your new phone is set up. These are usually sent to you when you first set up two-factor authentication on a website, so pay attention to that. Either that or you can use an application that backs up your 2FA codes for you. This might not be as secure though since someone else could download the app and figure out your login details for that application. SMS is the worst choice because attackers have been using social engineering to get cell phone service providers to switch SIM card phone numbers over to new phones. So even if an attacker never stole your phone, they could start getting all of your phone calls and texts on a new physical phone that stole your phone number. That means your 2FA SMS codes would be sent to an attacker instead of you. So why use 2FA if it's got drawbacks? Well, if your online account username and password was ever stolen, an attacker still could not get into your account without the two-factor authentication code. The event of an attacker targeting you for your username and password and two-factor authentication is highly unlikely, but an attacker targeting an online company to steal all the customer accounts off of it, that's very likely. Now, having that 2FA code locks them out of your account even if they got that info so you can rest assured that your online accounts are still safe. Of course, if you do find an account was compromised, 
organized, it's best to change that password as soon as possible anyway. Some options for 2FA, I already mentioned Yubico's YubiKeys for USB key two-factor authentication, but there is also apps for your smartphone, both iOS and Android. Google Authenticator is a great one, LastPass Authenticator, Authy, and Duo are just a few options. You basically just download whichever one you prefer on your phone and then you verify your identity. They all pretty much work the same. I use Authy, which sends a code to my phone number to verify that I actually own that number. Then it allows me to set a master password for the application and log in. Once I log in, I can add all the online accounts that I want that accept 2FA. I specifically use Authy because they offer a backup solution which encrypts and backs up the 2FA tokens to Authy servers. Now this is not the most secure option, but it is convenient for my needs because I'm constantly reviewing and switching phones for my different shows. Most applications don't have a backup option, which is honestly more secure because you aren't putting inherent trust in a company to protect your data. It's all stored locally on your phone instead. But again, if you lose that phone, you could be screwed. So how do you protect yourself from getting screwed out of your accounts? Several online websites that offer two-factor authentication security also offer backup codes when you first set up 2FA. For example, Google lets you set up 2FA and then it pops up with about 10 different codes and it says you should print or write down these codes because it will be the only way you can get into your account in the event that you lose your two-factor authentication app. For any accounts that have these backup codes, write them down and store them somewhere safe. I would keep them with other crucial documents like your birth certificate and stuff like that that you barely ever need or ever touch. Put them somewhere safe. Now, how do you know what websites use 2FA? This part is really easy. Two websites have popped up to tell you which online services have 2FA and how to turn it on. TwoFactorAuth.org is perfect for finding out what popular online services already have 2FA available and also has a built-in tweet function so you can tweet at any services that don't support 2FA and tell them to get on it because it's already 2017. Come on guys, I'm talking to you, Squarespace. The other site is TurnOn2FA.com, which has these really handy graphical tutorials on how to turn on 2FA for popular sites. Like, they include pictures. So it's literally that easy. <laughs> so go through your password manager and find each site that accepts two-factor authentication and turn them on. Scan the QR codes with your new 2FA app and start using those brand new 2FA codes. Yes, it is a little bit more hassle to have your phone on you whenever you need to log into a new site, but it's also such a headache for attackers. They probably won't even try to steal your accounts. So you are now halfway through with my 30 day security challenge. Congratulations. Day 15 is now complete. Tomorrow is all about consumer friendly VPNs. But first make sure to subscribe on youtube.com slash tech thing and hit up snubsy.com for the checklist. Again, I'm Shannon Morse and I will see you tomorrow for day 16.